Hello everybody, today's lesson is going to be on finding the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple using factor trees. So if you're not feeling that confident with factor trees from last lesson, um, please make sure that you pay particular attention to the exit ticket, which I'm going to go through today. If you're still not sure, go back over the lesson from um, Tuesday just to make sure that you're really confident because it's going to make a difference for the second part of this lesson. OK, so the first part of the lesson, uh, what we're going to be doing is populating Venn diagrams using our product of primes. It's going to look a little bit like this. And in the second part of the lesson, we're going to use those Venn diagrams to find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple. Um, and eventually we're going to bring all of that together using factor trees. OK, so we're going to go through our exit ticket from last lesson. Lots of you did this really, really well. And what I want to do is pick up on a few points that came up. So first of all, we need to draw a factor tree of 100. Now, there are a number of ways you can break down 100. But in the end, you're going to end up with exactly the same prime factors at the bottom of your tree. So don't worry too much if you break this down in a different way from me. So at the top of our tree, we've got 100. And what we want to do is break it down into two numbers that multiply together to make 100, OK? So you could pick 2 and 50, um, and that would be absolutely fine. So we're going to circle our prime number, which is 2. We don't need to include 1 or anything like that. That's just a complete waste of time, OK? Factors of 2 are 1 and 2. That's fine. 2 is a prime number. Circle it. Then I'm going to break 50 down into two numbers that multiply together to make 50. So I could have 2 and 25. You might have thought of 5 and 10. Um, that's fine. 2 is a prime number. I'm going to circle it. 25 is made up of 5 and 5. These are both prime numbers. 5 times 5 makes this number above. OK, so that's the first step. The final step is um, writing um, 100 out. So 100 equals 2, which is our first prime number circled, multiplied by 2, which is our second, multiplied by 5, and multiplied by 5. OK, so we're saying 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 will give us 100. 2, 2, 5 and 5 are all prime numbers. So having in here, for example, 2 times 10 times 5 is not a product of primes because 10 is not a prime number. OK, and I know some of you went even further and you said 2 times 2 is 2 squared and 5 times 5 is 5 squared. So I can write it like this. Both of those answers are absolutely right. So you get three marks for this question. I'm just going to show you um, a couple of other ways you could have broken this down as well. OK, so in blue, there are a couple of examples of different ways you could have broken 100 down into product of primes. But the key thing is your answer is always the same, regardless of how you break it down, so long as you just end up with prime numbers at the end. OK, and another thing I wanted to say is writing your product of primes in order of smallest numbers to biggest. So 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 it just makes it easier to see what's happening. OK, so we're going to go over a couple of key terms just to make sure you understand them. So for exercise one, we're going to be populating Venn diagrams with product of primes already given. So if you're not confident on factor trees, but you feel confident about Venn diagrams, you're going to do great on this. Don't worry. So our key terms are highest common factor, HCF and LCM, lowest common multiple. OK, so if you see HCF, LCM, that's what they mean. OK, so we're going to go through a couple of examples now of what we're going to do in the next exercise. So we want to populate um, a Venn diagram from the product of primes below. So we're saying 24 is made up of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 as prime numbers. If you multiply those together, they make 24. 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So if you multiply those together, they make 36. So in this circle on the left, um, what we're going to say is um, everything in that circle represents 24. And in the circle on the right, everything in that circle represents 36, so the whole thing. And then what we can say is anything in the middle section represents numbers that are in both the 24 and 36 list. OK, so you can just see where I've shaded that in. So any numbers in the middle are contained within 24 and 36. 
So what we're going to do is categorise the numbers in our list. So we've got 24 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, and 36 equals 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So we want to put the numbers that appear in both lists in the centre of our diagram. And we can see that there are two twos in both lists, and there are um, a three that appears in both of the lists as well. So we're going to write, we've got two twos that appear in both lists, and one three and we're going to write those just once okay because what we're saying is in our 24 circle everything in this circle here represents 24 and everything in this circle here represents 36 so they're in there twice then we're going to look at the numbers that don't appear in both lists so we've got 2 and 24 which is just on its own so we're going to write that once in this list and we've got three that appears once on its own in 36. So that appears in that list there. OK, and that is it. All we're doing is categorising our numbers into our Venn diagrams at this point. OK, so what I would like you to do is have a go at this question here. So 24 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. 40 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And the left hand circle equals 24, the right hand circle equals 40. So just have a go at that, pause the video, and I'll explain how to do this in a minute. OK, so hopefully you've had a go at these questions. First of all, we start by populating the centre of our diagram where the two circles intersect. So 2 times 2 times 2 appears in both lists. Therefore, I'm going to write 2, 2 and 2. I'm going to write it three times because it's represented in both circles. 3 is on its own in 24, so we write it on the left, and 5 is on its own in 40, so we write it once on the right. So your Venn diagram should have ended up looking like this. OK, so just have a go at these four questions, populating Venn diagrams. If you need to go back to the previous um, part of the video to remind yourself of what to do or make notes, please do that and pause the video now. OK, so this is what your Venn diagrams should have looked like. Mark your answers and pause the video if you need to now. OK, so for exercise two, we are going to be working on finding the highest common factor, the HCF, and the lowest common multiple, the LCM, um, from our product of prime. So this is after we've populated our Venn diagram. We're going to use that to find out this information. OK, so in a worked example, this goes back to the uh, worked example from the last section. We've already populated our Venn diagram here. And what we want to do is work out the highest common factor and lowest common multiple. So first of all, the highest common factor is found by multiplying everything that is in the middle of our diagram here. So we can say our highest common factor is 2 times 2 times 3. And if we multiply those together, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is going to give you 12. OK, our lowest common multiple is everything in our Venn diagram. So we're multiplying absolutely everything that's in our Venn diagram. So this time we've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 in the middle. And then we're multiplying that by 3. And that will give us an answer of 72. OK, so we might use these Venn diagrams to work out what our highest common factor and lowest common multiple are, where we've got more complicated numbers. It saves us having to draw two factor bugs, compare the numbers and make lists, although there are times when that's going to be easier. In this lesson, we're going to be focusing on this method. OK, so make sure you've made some notes. I would like you to have a go at finding the highest common factor and lowest common multiple of 24 and 40. Now, you should have your Venn diagram from um, the last example to use. If you don't, you've got the um, answers in here. So what we're looking to do is find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple from this information. So just pause the video um, before I go through the answers. OK, so hopefully you've had a go at this and you found the highest common factor is just multiplying the numbers in the intersection of those two circles 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 
And then to find the lowest common multiple, you are multiplying all of your numbers in your Venn diagram. So three on the left times two times two times two in the middle times five, and that will give you an answer of 120. Okay, so there are four questions on this slide and four questions on the following slide. We're trying to find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of the numbers for each question. So you're going to need to populate the Venn diagram first, and then you're going to find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple for each question. Okay, so just pause the video and have a go at these questions, exactly the same as you've just been doing. OK, so let's mark your answers and um, pause the video as needed. And for questions five to eight, mark your answers, pause the video as needed. OK, so you don't need to submit this question. This is just kind of trying to bring together everything that we've been working on um, the last couple of lessons. So challenge question is to find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple of 124 and 200. So I want you to, first of all, break those two numbers down into factor trees and write them as product of primes, just like you did for your exit question. Um, then you're going to organise your factors into a Venn diagram and then you're going to find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor. And that is basically everything that you need to know um, in terms of this particular area of finding highest common factor, lowest common multiple. OK, so answers are going to look like this. OK, so for part one, your factor trees may have ended up looking something like this. But for part two, they definitely will have ended up looking like this at the end, because regardless of how you've broken those down, they should have been your answers. 124 is a bit of a mean one. 31 is a prime number. OK, so part three, we want to organise these values into a Venn diagram. And it will have ended up looking something like this. So it might be quite rough. Don't worry too much about the perfection of your circles. So the final part is we want to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor of our numbers. So remember, finding a highest common factor, we are multiplying the numbers in the middle of our Venn diagram. So where our two circles overlap, so you should get an answer of four. And for your lowest common multiple, you're multiplying all the numbers in your Venn diagram together. And you will end up with 6,200 as your answer. So very well done if you managed to get all of that. If you only manage to get to the prime factor trees, that's fine too. This is very tricky. Um, do feel free to message me on Show My Homework or email me.